But first, this was a surreal scene in the House this week, as members voted to dedicate more than $300 billion for small businesses. Moments after she appeared on the House floor with her mask, I spoke to Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz about what this new money will do, as well as how Florida and our governor is handling this crisis. Unfortunately, and this is just the reality, Republicans insisted on several things in CARES 1 that made it so that it was much less likely that truly small businesses would get access to the Paycheck Protection Program funds. One was that they defined, they insisted on a definition of small business as being 500 employees or less. Two, uh, the big banks went ahead and decided that they were only going to accept applications from significant customers who had lines of credit with them. Some of them started to relax that, but basically all the big banks insisted that they'd only accept applications for people who had a prior customer relationship. That's not in the law. And that was, and that was because, I think it's important to point out, that was because they made more fees by doing that that way, correct? <laughs> yeah, you know, well, what's, and, and I'm going to be pushing hard on this to get this changed because the fee schedule makes it so that the larger the loan, the more that the big banks get, well, the banks, period, but the more that the big banks get paid in fees. Now, Jim, there is absolutely no difference in the processing between a loan that is less than, three, less than $350,000 or you know, 500,000 or more, or, or 20,000. So because there is no difference, the fee schedule should be level. There should no, not be an incentive to have a, business, a larger business who's at, or, or a business asking for a larger loan or a bank to have that business cut the line. And that's clearly what happened with the big banks. They let their best customers who were, who were going after the biggest loans cut the line, and that's how the money dried up so fast. So in this bill, in this interim bill, Democrats insisted that we were able to get $60 billion of the $310 billion we're adding set aside, unfortunately not for specifically truly small businesses, but set aside for smaller independent community bank lenders and credit unions and minority business lend lenders set aside for them to provide that lending. And they generally are much more small business friendly more likely to have small businesses, truly small businesses, as their customers, and so that's the that's the way we that's why we uh, we, we push so hard. And originally, Mc, Mitch McConnell and the Senate, you know, the Senate leader, was just going to pass two hundred and fifty billion dollars in the same program and call it a day, and we would have had the exact same thing happen. So we had three hundred and ten billion for the PPP program, sixty billion of which is set aside for smaller community lenders. The VA strike teams, I know that you've been working and talking to folks at the VA about how they can help, particularly in nursing homes and assisted living facilities. What have you been able to find out? Well, initially, what I, I have been talking to folks in the VA right along all the way up to the secretary um, about the very critical shortage they've had in personal protective equipment. Like I said, I received an anonymous whistleblower letter about the directives that have been given to our medical personnel at the VA, uh, the, the, what the instructions they've been given on the extension of the use of masks, suggestions that they should put them, put them out in the sun so, to, to help sterilize them, to, you know, instead of changing them with each, with, with each day or with each patient, that they're, they're being forced to use the same, the same masks, the same equipment over and over again. And that is, again, because the president has left everyone to fend for themselves. And the VA has even had to go out on the private market. Our local VA has gone on the private market to bring in, to, to buy their own supplies. Again, competing with state and local governments, competing with hospitals, it, it's insane. Now on nursing homes, uh, I just learned the other day that the VA has been asked by the Department of Health and Human Services to send 15 emergency strike teams doctors, nurses, physical therapists, respirational, respiration therapists, respiratory therapists, out to very problematic nursing homes in the state of Florida. We're talking private nursing homes that have infection control problems and that have had such dire shortages of their personnel that they're needing to use the VA's fourth mission. Their fourth mission is to assist when there is a need in the civilian population. So that part is appropriate. 
but the fact that we are just now learning that this is that, 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 that this is a necessity when Governor DeSantis has been extremely opaque and refused to share any information until very recently when he was basically forced to do it about the dire situation in our private nursing homes. And so it's really problematic when you have the VA that is having trouble making sure that their own healthcare workers have the ability to protect themselves while they're taking care of VA patients. And now we're sending them out into the private sector to, to clean up for what private nursing homes should have been doing themselves. It shows you just how bad things are. Well, you talk about the governor recently releasing some information, but what he's released is is very narrow. It's not very comprehensive. You know, the, there's a listing of names of, of nursing homes and ALFs where uh, there have been positive COVID tests, but no real information like how many people tested positive, right. whether anyone has died in those facilities. You know, it's and and then talking to folks from uh, SEIU, the, the union that represents many of those nursing home workers, they say they're aware of numerous nursing homes that they know that there are folks positive on that are not even on the list. So they don't even trust the list. Right, so, I don't trust the list either. How much more needs to be done? As yeah. you, Mu you don't want that much, long? much more. I don't trust the list either. Um, it's at least, look, you have at least 15 private nursing homes in Florida that the Department of Health and Human Services, the federal agency that's responsible for overseeing nursing homes, felt was, had such dire problems that they are having to deploy emergency strike teams from the VA because they have infection control problems and because they have so many employees that have come down with COVID-19 that they have critical shortages and they need assistance. And that's to say nothing of the total lack of transparency uh, from the state and, and their refusal to give full information and details. We're talking about families who have loved ones in these nursing homes, Jim, and they don't know whether it's safe to keep their loved one in that nursing home or not. I mean, if, if it's gotten so bad that you have to send VA strike teams in to take over for the, uh, the, the, the shoddy infection control and, and you know, the, the fact that they have dire situations with lack of, of personnel to take care of their patients, then this, this has exploded out of control. And the, these, the deaths, the, the infection, the, the spread of infection and illness is, lays right at Ron DeSantis's feet. Let's stay with Ron DeSantis for a second and talk about the debacle that has been the unemployment system, you know, trying yes. to get people, trying to get people uh, paid. Um, and not just for the meager allotment that the state provides, which is a maximum of $275 uh, a week, but also the federal government's, the $600 that you've approved for unemployed folks, that has to go through the state system and that's all being right. held up as well. Yes, you yes. Know, go ahead, talk to me about it, where, where we need to be. It's, it's so bad, it's hard to know even where to begin. First of all, we have a system that was essentially held together with wax and spit um, and twine because Rick Scott created an intentionally underfunded, you know, woefully inadequate uh, unemployment compensation insurance system so he could keep his unemployment numbers low in the state. But you know, he's a senator now, not governor. And Ron DeSantis has been in, in office since you know, the, beginning of, uh, the beginning of 2019. And he had multiple, two legislative sessions in which he could have made attempt, an attempt to fix the system at, now, no, no system could really be prepared to withstand the onslaught of unemployment that we've had. But to have had eight, over 800,000 applications and only been able to process 6% of them as of the other day, uh, that is an outrage. When we come back, Congresswoman Donna Shalala. 